what we're going to do today is go over um, introducing Enterprise PDM API and kind of walk through your very first application. So Enterprise uh, PDM API, um, first of all, what is it? And um, it's it's a series of collection or, or collections of objects, API objects, um, that allow access to EPDM functionality uh, to third-party applications. So if you're you or somebody else creating an application, it allows you access to EPDM functionalities and allows you to automate processes, um, customize processes, automate operations, add functionality, get information from the vault, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, almost everything that you can do in EPDM API uh, how UI is available in API. Um, almost is always the case because a UI tends to be just uh, one couple of steps ahead of the, the API, obviously. So the first functionality comes and then APIs are made available. Um, what do you need to get started? Microsoft uh, Visual Studio, uh, that's the Express version, and it's free. Uh, you can Google it or go to Microsoft uh, site and download it. Um, allows you to program in either VB or C Sharp. Takes me to the second requirement is that you need to have some knowledge um, or .NET programming. Uh, it's pretty easy to learn actually. Um, so if you've got um, little or no programming experience, um, you don't have to despair. You can just um, start doing some tutorials and uh, you'll be on your way. Uh, a lot of people in our company, including myself, are self-taught. Um, uh, much, if not all, of the programming knowledge that we have. And uh, a will to learn. That's all you need to do. Uh, and obviously, you need, a, you need an APDM uh, license. goes without saying. Um, in EPDM, you can do um, a standalone application, so a you know, Windows application that allows you to connect to the vault and uh, do what you have to do. Or you can actually create add-ins, EPDM add-ins, to, um, to work, to install in the vault and, and kind of work uh, as you work. So it's, it's in listening mode and you make menus available and you can, you can do things while EPDM works is doing. And, and the add-in is deployed automatically to all clients. So once you install it on any of the vault, Admin, it will it will install, it will install all, all the clients automatically. Where to get help and how to get started? The best place to start, if you see my vault here, you've got the add-ins node here. You initially may have a dispatch or no add-ins. Um, Right-click on that add-in, programming programmer's reference guide. This is an excellent so resource for you to get help. It has a ton of examples, um, explanations, and, and um, information on all objects, obsolete or not. This is where I would go, as I mentioned, the standalone applications examples in C++, Sharp, .NET, and, and add in applications in, uh, in all those languages. So you have um, at least one sample application of each type for each one of those languages. Um, additionally, you can uh, go to the forums, uh, knowledge base, there are sample applications um, everywhere, so you, you have a lot of resources to get started. All right, so I'm going to do one more poll. Um, just wanted to know what the experience level is in this group. If you uh, please uh, select one of those options, just want to get a, an idea, flair of uh, where we're standing.
Okay, so we have um, we have a varied group, which is which is good. Uh, we've got people with uh, um, little experience, um, some with uh, uh, you know sizable number with uh, some background in programming, uh, .NET or otherwise. It really doesn't matter. Um, programming is programming. Um, if you know one language, you will pick up the rest um, relatively easily. Um, so um, what I'm going to do. Obviously, this is going to be a step-by-step -step introduction to to create your first ad, and, and uh, we'll get um, we'll try to get this um, completed. That's relatively simple, but useful. It's the ad -in will be useful. Um, we were not going to cover the basics of uh, programming or or .NET. Um, this will be recorded, so you will uh, we will make the recording available to you. Um, and if you can email me, if you email me, um, then I will uh, email you back the source code as well um, to take a look at it. Um, as I said, we're not going to cover normal um, or, or uh, basic uh, programming lingo. So if you uh, if you know something good, if you don't know something, then uh, then at least you get exposed to it here, and then you can. Uh, um, research and, and learn um, based on that. All right, um, so what I have here is um, Visual Studio. This is uh, um, a professional version, but the Express version will look identical. Um, it has some of the functionality, it lacks some of the functionalities, but I'm not going to be using those functionalities for the purpose of, uh, of today. So you're going to see exactly the same thing when you download the Visual Studio um, Express version from Microsoft. Um, I'm going to select new project. Um, the dot in the framework um, target is latest 4.5. Um, typically, what uh, EPDM asks you, that help asks you, is to create a class library. That's where um, th that's how you make an add-in. The add-in is a class library. Um, however, um, class libraries are, are not easy to debug. So when you're writing a code, um, it's, it helps to, to write it in, a, in an environment or an application type that's easy to debug, uh, easy to run. Um, so out of habit, I start with a uh, WinForm application or a console application. Um, and I can run it on a single file, uh, connect to the vault, and then once I'm ready, I keep in mind that I'm going to change this to a class library, ultimately, uh, and, and I will I'll, I will talk about how I do that. Um, but initially, I always do, almost always do, uh, WinForm or, or console applications. And then, when I'm done and I feel comfortable that all my uh, functionalities are working for a single file, I can um, turn this into a class library. That's easy to do, and then we'll have the add-in. Um, so let's call this um, something. I'm going to have sample EPDM add-in. Uh, console application is the application type. Click OK. Um, this is a very simple application. I do not have any um, UIs, so no forms. I don't need them. Um, I have a module, um, it's a static class if you're familiar with C, um, and an entry point submain. Um, what I'm going to do um, is write an application that is available to a right click context menu in EPDM Vault. So when you select a file and you right click on it, I want my application to be available at that point. What the application is going to do is, um, let me go to my vault here and select a file. You can see that this file in the data card has um, a variable, part number, uh, which is actually linked to uh, the number variable. Um, a lot of companies want this number to also be their file name, which in this case obviously is not. Um, what I want my application or my add-in to do is read 
the variable from the data card um, and then rename my part to match this this um, this variable now you can say that you know it's easy to do you can do it manually um, but you can build on this application to um, to this for a bunch of files you can select a lot of files um, or you can um, create a hook application or add in hook add in hook means it listens to events in EPDM uh, so for example you can uh, you can uh, tie it to a state change so whenever something goes through state change it will make sure that this file this part number and the file name are identical so you can you can see that that's actually a useful application so a lot of people do ask for it all right so we're going to get started step by step uh, as I said the first thing I'm going to do is um, create an application that will look for a single file in the vault and then turn it into an add-in application the first thing I want to do with my program is add a reference to it to enterprise PDM um, library um, without it I will not have any op access to all, all the API objects so to do that I can right click my solution here this is called a solution add references and if you can just type PDM oh here it says PDM works enterprise 2014 library now if I want to show my files show all files so I can see the references this is the first one that I want. Now there's one more step that I need to do. I don't want this to be an embedded interop. Now what that means is when I compile my application, I want this file to also be copied. So when I deploy my application, I want this file to be available. Um, the reason for that is the EPDM when you add add-ins, you need to select two files that's your add and output and also the enterprise PDM library that was used to create that add -in. so at this point it's an embedded interop which means this will not be copied locally it will not be if I compile I will only see sample EPDM add in DLL I want to see this one as well I want to set this to false and copy local is automatically set to true save um, save my application create a subdirectory just uh, so that I don't lose it secondly I'm going to import a namespace now if you're familiar with um, .NET um, that's obvious if you're not it's basically um, telling my page my um, class or my uh, my environment that I'm going to be referring to the libraries or to objects that that uh, are contained in this library so I don't have to specify the entire pot and I use that by imports etm lib okay now that allows me to have apps access to all the API objects of EPDM vault I'm going to declare some variables the first thing I always want to declare is the vault because I really want a vault object vault is is um, the entry point as you know to the EPDM vault view where all the files are stored as IEDM vault and you can see these numbers this is important now each one of them if you understand the concept of inheritance inherits from the one before so 11 inherits from 10 and 10 from 5 and all that um, what I want typically is to select the latest unless you're deploying to an older version of EPDM than what you're writing the latest gives you the everything that was uh, available before plus everything that's available it's just but that's just been made available um, 
I want a file object. Again, picking the latest. I want a folder object. Picking the latest. I think I'm okay with that. So I would like to instantiate the vault. Vault is a class. Now you can see that it's it's um, not an interface. It's a class. It's the base class that they're all inherit from. So I want to instantiate it with Vault 5. Um, if you're a C Sharp developer, that looks weird, but uh, maybe you can cast uh, direct casting is allowed. So. So that gives me a new fresh vault, and I'm going to log in. Vault, login. Now, if I pick login, it's going to ask me for a username and password. Login X is what SolarWorks recommends at this point. In fact, SolarWorks requires you to use login X. The reason is login X is compliant. Um, if you're creating a standalone application, Login X allows you uh, to to consume a license when you when you connect. Um, the ones before that did not, so you were kind of piggybacking on an existing license. Um, technically, you had two licenses or however many applications you had. Uh, we're going to use Login Auto because we are not going to um, use this as an application. This is a test. And when we actually create an add-in, obviously the add-in automatically is an application. It uses the current Windows login user, whoever is logged in. That's the license it uses. Um, so I'm just going to do login auto. And login auto requires my vault name. My vault name is name app demo. And zero is the parent window. That's the main window. That's where the login dialog box will show. And then I'm going to get, a, once I'm logged in, I'm going to get a file object. File, vault, get file from path. And I have this file. So any file would do, actually. Uh, is the path here. And this is an optional older um, reference. Um, so if I default, which is my folder object, it actually gives me access to the parent folder where that file resides, which is this folder, right? I don't need that, but I'm um, just going to get it anyways. Um, now, I have that file object. Let's see if I can um, actually, I don't need one of those forms. Uh, sorry about that. I can say if file is not I think then message box file name. There's a better way to it. If I create a breakpoint there, it walks me through the code. Just want to make sure that I got my vault. Vault is I was already logged in, so it didn't give me the login window. But if I was, then it would just give me the normal EPTM login window and allows me to log in. I got the file. It doesn't say nothing. That's good news. And just throws back the file name at me. So I got access to my file object. This part is working. So I now I have a file and a folder object. Now what I'm going to do is create a class that will do the operations that we talked about. The operations was read a variable, name, number, um, check to make sure that file um, was not, um, was of the same name as the number uh, variable, if it had a value. If it, if it wasn't, then uh, rename the file to be the same as the number variable. 
So with that, I'm going to um, let me hide all the other ones. Create a class. Um, call it file updater. My class is going to need a reference to the EDM library as well. That's obvious because we're going to be using a lot of that. And I'm going to have um, some variables, private file ID, the underscore just convention um, to refer to internal um, private hold ID as integer. Now, notice that I'm using file IDs rather than file objects. File IDs um, are, are good for two reasons. One, when I'm converting this to an add-in, you will see it will be very easy, convenient for me. The second one is I always like to use file IDs because file names can change, but IDs in EPDM Vault are constant. That's how you track files, and that's how EPDM tracks its files. I'm going to have a Vault object. I'm going to have an um, enumerator variable object. This actually allows me, this interface allows me to read variables, card variables, and write back on to card variables if I need to. And I can pick the latest, which is, uh, I believe, 9. And I will have file 8. And you can see that I didn't put private, but they're the same in this class because the class itself is not going to be exposed. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of more, declare a couple of more variables. I'm going to have um, that's my variable value. I don't know if I will need that, but I just want to be able to read it and uh, possibly display it back to the user. Um, so that's it. Now I'm going to create my class constructor. This is always there. You don't have to do that. But for class construction, which is I'm instantiating the class um, from outside, I will require some parameters. So when somebody else, when, when I later myself instantiate this class, I'm going to pass to it my file ID as integer. Parent folder ID as integer. As you can see, uh, as you saw, we already have that from my uh, previous uh, get file from path call. And I'm going to have a vault object. In the instantiation, inside the constructor, I'll set my privately declared local variables to what the user or the application is passing. So I forgot uh, the underscore there is just good practice, be consistent. Parent fold ID, vault is vault. All right. Um, when I get these values, I'm going to get access to this enum variable. Uh, and for that, it's pretty easy. So I can just say, oops, first of all, I'm going to have a file. My file object is my vault object. Get object this time because this time I have the ID and not the path. So it's going to pick get object and it's going to tell me what, ask me which kind of object is a file. And the parameter, the second parameter it requires is the ID of the file, file ID. 
just to make sure I got something. If I get something, then get the, the variable accessor or interface. the file. This will allow me to access, as I said, file variable. And the reason I declare it in the constructor is because I can access it from anywhere else in the class. Okay, so from the outside, the user declares my class, a new instance of the class, gives it all these parameters because we already have that here. Right, um, and it gives me an access to the enumerator. Now, what can I do afterwards is um, I need to have some property. So classes have some properties. The first of all, I want to make sure that this file has the variable called number. There's a value for it. Public read only property. Has variable is Boolean. Right. Um, for this, I'm going to have a function check for it. File has number. Variable as Boolean. Boolean is a true or false, in case you don't know that. So um, it's going to have some uh, number val as object. And the reason is um, you will see why it's an object, not a string. And in this case, now, one thing that, that you have to remember is that when, when reading data cards, there are configurations involved. We will get back to configurations, but initially we're going to assume this is a SOLIDWORKS part and the number isn't at configurations, so the at symbol. Um, that may not be the case, and I will, if time permitting, we'll go and cover um, how to look for iterate configurations. So if, say, if in where, get where, get variable basically reads a variable. Configuration name or variable name is number. Configuration name, as I said, is add. Number val. This is I'm, I'm selecting a putting a, a null object there. And if there's no value there, it was just going to return false. So it will not go here. Um, So if there is a value, I'm going to convert it to string and set that private property that we had here equal. And I'll also return true. Otherwise, return false. Otherwise, it doesn't have the number property. So here, I'm just going to go return file has repairable. So the output of this function. I hope that makes sense. Second property. Again, read only property is that uh, number variable. So first, I'm going to call this, and then that. Let's let's see if that works. I'm going to go back to my module here, my test module. I'm going to declare a new instance of that class I just created. Um, read the number property if it has. If it doesn't, send me back a message. New file updater. 
can see it as file ID. So I'm just, I have the file object here. If I put the IntelliSense, it gives me the ID. Fold ID, I have the fold object here. IntelliSense has an ID property. And it requires a vault object, which I will just pass. If file updater has variable, then message box file updater number variable. So tell me what that is. Else message box no variable. Okay, let's test that. M00213, see if that's, that's true. That is, it's an add configuration. Let's see if there are any questions. Um, I will answer the questions. Um, at the at the end, uh, time permitting. So um, if you you can feel free to type or type when you when we are finished. Um, there are a couple of questions that I will answer. Um, on a, anyway, so let's go ahead with uh, a little bit faster with our um, class and actually create some more methods. So now I know how to check for the variable and I know. Um, how to um, the, read the variable. Uh, so now I'm going to have a method that actually will update the file name. Public sub. Update file. Right. So the first thing is um, we can we can put more bells and whistles and error catchers, but for the purpose of this, uh, time is short, so I'm just going to um, just do some redundancy check. Uh, first of all, if I don't have a number variable, obviously I'm not going to rename the file. So let's just get that out of the way. If string is empty or white space. So this could be, you know, I, I don't know if you know, but in a number variable in, in EPDM, uh, you can put a few spaces and, and save that, and that's saved as a string. So obviously, if that's the case, we want to catch that. Um, number ver, that's the number variable that we have already read. So this assumes that we have read it once. Um, so and in your program, you have to make sure that you don't call this first before calling the other one to check whether it has a variable. That check itself will we'll make sure us to read it. And we can put this in the check itself, um, but just just uh, extra caution, we can put it here. Uh, if that's the case, exit up, so don't do anything. Now I'm going to have the file name without extension. So what's the file name without extension? Same file name, no extension as string, right? That's just a variable. File name no extension um, is input output namespace path get file name without extension. Um, you can get more information about this call out anywhere. It's pretty popular. Um, so in this case, it's going to be my file object. We already have that. A name. This will not work for virtual documents in EPDM because virtual documents have two extensions. They've got extension.cvd. So in, in, in which case you'll have to account for that. Remove CVD first and then get the extension. So just, just so that you know. Now I'm going to check whether this is the same as number variable. So file name, if file name, 
no extension. Now, when I'm comparing strings in, in any programming, it actually is case sensitive. So I'm just going to do to lower both of them. So that's lowercase against lowercase. Exit sub. So if, if if they are the same, then don't do anything. Now, I'm done. That means if I if I reach here, then there, there is a there is a variable number. Um, there is a, a variable number has a value, and it's not the same as a file name. So in this case, the file needs to be renamed. New file name string. Um, file extension string. Um, I'm going to get the file extension using the same IO path. Get file extension. Uh, I think it's get extension and it's file name. So here we got file or dot extension, we, we're just getting extension. That's dot whatever. And new file name is um, number variable and file extension. The file extension includes the dot, the period. So this is going to be my new file name. And here, going to say file, rename, rename extended is what I will use because it actually takes care of um, the cache files. If you have it open in SolarWorks, it, it, it will not, um, you know, as long as it's checked in, it will not, gonna, it's not going to complain. The first rename will complain. So you can read uh, the documentation for explanation of that. Um, the window, that's the, the window that it prompts you. In this case, it will not prompt you because it's an API. Uh, a new file name. Um, that's my new file name. This is going to be new file name. And it says in the documentation that the flags must be zero because it's reserved. It's some internal thing. All right. It updates the file name. And I'm just going to go here. It has, instead of messaging me just uh, the value, I'm going to ask it to update the file name. And remember, it's um, 0060 as a file. And the property is M00213. And by pressing F10, by the way, it steps through the, the code. Um, so I can go to definition, put a breakpoint here, walk it to the logic. Number variable has already been read, M00213. So it's not going to exit sub. There is some value there. File name without extension is part 0060. Let's remove the SLDPRT. It, this is obviously not uh, equal to number variable. File extension is .sldprt. We got that. New file name that should be is whatever that value was for number variable .sldprt. File rename takes a moment. So let's go back and refresh uh, APDM requires refresh. And there you go. And if I go to the history, it says renamed from this to that. As you know, since the file is checked in, EPDM works. EPDM uh, will take care of all the references. So the file ID hasn't changed. It's just the name that's available to the user. So that's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, um, our add-in is ready. Uh, our add-in is completely ready. Now we're going to create it, um, implement it as an add-in. 
So for that, I need a class. This is going to be your typical add-in. This is how you, so EPDM add-in. You can name it whatever. You can, don't have to name it that. Import CDM limb. So for the add-in, it has to implement an interface. Implements IDM add-in 5. This is um, documented in the help file. The interface gives you two things. The sub where the add-in info implementation, this is the information about your add-in and the commands that you're adding, menus, hooks, and all that. And second is the on command. And that's obvious, uh, you know, what happens when you, when you hit the command. Now, more information about that is here. And this is very useful. I always go to it because um, IntelliSense doesn't always work with this. If I say create add-ins, it tells me exactly how to create an add-in. Add-in hooks is where I want. Hooks is anything that you have catch here and then hook here. So something happens, user clicks a menu, something happens. If I go to vb.net, it gives me a typical add-in hook, multiple files. Um, EDM command data is is important, and I will show in a second. This you should always know how to get to. So, based on what the command type is, EPDM will pass certain parameters to the user. You don't have to, you know, it tells you what the user has selected. What's the file? What's the folder? Who's the user? How many files have been selected? This is the information you get from here. A card button. You can create an add-in that's, that's, that's tied to a button on the card. And if that's the case, these things will tell you what the card is, what the file is, uh, who the user is. If it's a menu, it will tell you who the, uh, the file is, what the folder is, uh, who the, uh, um, the user is, and all that. Uh, card input. Um, pre add, you know, what, you know, if the hook is pre add just before the user adds the file, what information can the EPDM give me? What are the files that are being added? State change, post add, there are, most of the events have pre and post, pre state change and post state change. So you can create an add, add, add in that checks something for, um, that's about to change state and stop the user if uh, you know if this variable is not set. I mean you can do that in transition action, but if you need something more complicated, change check it against the database, for example, that will be your add-in. Um, and this gives information of what is what parameters are passed through that. In this case, I'm gonna first of all create my information. So that is PO info. That's this one. Beautiful hat, add a name. My first add in. Company. You can put your company name here. Now, this is not required. You can put description there. This is required. Required version. What version do, does your add-in require? Major is your EPDM version. Minor is your service pack. So say 14 service pack 3. Anything less, it will not install. Um, and also, what are my add-in version? This is also an integer, one, two, three, four. This is very, uh, it's required and useful because as you make changes to your add-ins, um, this keeps track of it and tells you which, ver which version is installed. Okay, so that's information. Now I'm gonna add a menu to, um, to EPDM, uh, a right-click context-sensitive menu. And that is the second one, command manager. Add command and add hook. Hook would be pre-state, post-state, pre-add, pre-check-in, things like that. Post-rename, for example. With renames, if somebody renames, you can give a message say, you just renamed the file, remember to do this, this, this. Um, so in this case, 
I'm just going to do a command because it's just a menu. Command ID. Command IDs are what below here you'll identify a command as. Command IDs don't have to be unique between add-ins. So if you have an add-in that uses command ID 1, you can reuse it here. But within the add-in, command IDs must be unique. So you cannot have two commands with the ID of 1 in the same add-in. Um, this is an integer, so I'm just going to do 1. Menu string. What is the menu? Update file name, for example. And then we've got flags. These are binary flags. These are options, a collection of options. EDM menu flags. Um, in this case, we want must have selection. So there has, has to be a selection plus only files. So I don't want uh, folders. Plus, um, only single selection. So we can add more to that, but at this point, we're just going to use for a single file. And you can definitely add, um, you can use this add-in for multiple files. Um, by simply doing a little bit more work. Okay, that's all I'm going to have. Now, here, I'm going to have another vault object because remember, I want to um, pick the vault object from my the add in itself. The vault will be few command. This is command data. The command data will have command ID, command comment, everything else, but also a vault. Now I'm going to check for command ID. If it's one, if it's not, then don't do anything, obviously. Um, if it's one, then File ID, all ID is integer, declare the variable. Now remember in my command data here, for the menu, I get ID of the file, ID of the parent folder, and name of the file, which is very convenient for my class. I'm asking for ID of the file, ID of the folder, parent folder, and vault object. That's why I had that in mind writing there. Um, So now, file ID is this is this will send an array of selected files. I can iterate through all selected files if there are multiple selections. But in this case, um, I'm ensuring this is a single selection here. So this is very convenient for me to just pick this first element of the array because there's only going to be one file. And even even for whatever reason, there's more file. I'm going to ignore it. Um, but it won't be because in this case it will not allow multiple files. So file ID is PPO data. This is the array of the files that are being passed. Zero dot. Now you can see that don't get the IntelliSense because um, this is uh, just a system array. It's not a specific type and it, di it differs depending on what kind of commands there are. So that's why this is very useful. I'm just going to copy and paste that. This is going to be my file ID. Right? Fold ID. PPO data. Still first element, first file. Now, make sure you don't confuse. It says ID 2 is ID of the folder, zero if a file is selected. That's only when a folder is selected. However, the third one is ID of the parent folder of the selected file. This is what I want. I want the parent folder because this is going to be zero as I'm only selecting file. So it's going to be this one that I want. 
And that's all I have. Now, remember this. I'm going to create a new class, instance of this class. And if it has an update, I'm going to update the file name. That's all you need to do here. Updater, it asked me for our file ID. I already have that. Asked me for parent folder ID. I already have that. And asked me for vault. I have that. Now, there's one thing I need to do. What if the file is checked out by me or somebody else? Rename should be done when the file is checked in. I can handle it in my EPDM, add in, check it back in, make sure. But for simplicity, I'm going to give a user a warning to say, this file is checked out. You cannot do this particular operation and get out of there. So for that, I can put it in my class or put it here. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it in my class later on. So now, if file update Actually, let's let's do that. Let's quickly do a property, public read only property is locked as Boolean. Tim is locked as Boolean. So it's just a true or false. If file is not nothing. Yeah, then if file is locked, then is locked is true, else is locked is false, right? And my property, I simply return is locked. So just for cleanliness, I, I wanted to handle it inside the class rather than here. So the first thing I want to change, the file updater is locked. Then I'm going to send a message inside the vault. You can use the internal message box. And vault object has a message box. So the parent window is zero. It's just um, whatever window it is open. File is checked out. And the type of this is OK only and exit sub. So don't do anything. Now the second one is a file updater has variable, then file updater, update file name. If not, vault message box, zero, file has no number variable. It's an OK. Um, OK only. End of. That's all I need to do. Now, remember that this is a console application. What I want is I want this to change to a class library. Class library. And one more step that you should remember, and this is documented in the help, is you make assembly com visible. I'm just going to build this. And that should have created a D two DLLs EDM library DLL, as I said before, and the sample add in DLL. Let's go if that's the case. I'm going to right click. New add-in, sample add-in. It's initially stored in the debug folder under bin. And while voilà, there's two add-ins, interop EDM library DLL and sample EPDM add-in. I select both. When you're adding add-in, you have to select both of them, box select. Click OK. You can see that my add-in name is there, Hawker Systems Company. First version, 2014 SP3, 
and some description. Right? Click OK. Says you have chosen to attend add in some warning. Click OK. And your add in appears here. Let's go back to let's go to a vault. So if I now right click, the first time right click is gonna take a while because it's gonna load load that menu. Update file name is there. Now if I go to the data card for this file, is there a number there? Yes. Three zero zero four zero. Right click on it. Update file name. I didn't put an OK um, successful uh, message. That's probably a good idea in hindsight, but there we go. Three zero zero four zero. Right. Um, This one, the add configuration doesn't have that. So let's see what happens here. File name has no number variable. It's working as, as intended. Um, let's check out the file that does have. File is checked out. Check it back in. Has no number. Oh, yeah, there's no variable there. Default has it, but the add doesn't. This one, the add configuration does it. So here, refresh. There's a go. That one was renamed. That is the basic EPDM demo. We had to go. We have to kind of rush through it because it uh, still takes um, takes a while, even though it's a simple application. Um, but um, you, we saw the gist of it. Um, there's one thing that we didn't do was handle the configurations. Um, the configurations is handled by, uh, I'm just going to show you in the application that I already had before, this one. Everything else is identical to what we did. There you go, the file updater. Um, in the instantiator constructor, I'm, I have a configuration. So you can see conf names as a list of strings. So I have an array of strings. And how do I get that? Is by um, a string array, it's just like a IDM string five and get configurations. Position is basically an iterator. Um, uh, and you're basically walking through configurations and adding configuration names to the list. So this, you know, if you if you request for a source code, I will send you this one which because it will already have that. Um, and when I'm reading the variable, when I'm reading the variable, where the file has variable, I don't do at configuration. Um, I iterate through configurations for all the names. So it says, okay, look at the at configuration. If there's none, look at the default configuration. If there's none, and the first one it finds, it returns true and gets the value. So the first configuration it sees that has the value returned. So even if though even though it was hidden in the default configuration, it would have picked it up. Um, we couldn't cover that uh, quite in detail, but just wanted to mention that. Um, that's it for the portion here. And uh, I am opening. Um, Time for some uh, questions. Um, if you have any questions, you can type it in. The questions I have here is, can this be used as in work group? And the answer is no. This is enterprise PDM API. Um, nothing to do with work group API. Work group has its own set of APIs, uh, but this is completely different. you have any more um, 
Do we have any more questions? Um, this is a webinar, so everybody's in in, uh, in mute, so you're gonna have to type your questions uh, or raise your hand or something. Okay, um, don't see any more questions. Um, what I um, suggest you do is that we have a, a, we write a lot of applications internally here. Uh, our brand is called Hawkware, and um, basically it's a set of um, a lot of free applications, some paid, but a lot of free applications you can go download uh, for both SOLIDWORKS and uh, EPDM. Um, so, you know, Hawkware standards, Hawkware tools, TreeView, uh, which is a hot little new item for uh, addition to our family of Hawkware. Um, Hawkware tools is for SolarWorks. TreeView is also for SolarWorks, but it actually allows a visual representation of of your assembly. A visual tree you can you can update, you can print, you can uh, screen capture, etc. Hawkware tools is a is a collection of um, SolarWorks applications or uh, plugins. Um, but there's a lot of things. Um, variable creator, add references, folder creator, bomb explorer, they're all um, EPDM related. CatFit is, um, is, a, uh, is excellent for migration, it's also EPDM related. And we've got some professional um, applications as well. You can feel free to take a look at it. Um, basically just, uh, you know, you can, you can also add, request more applications on our website. There's actually feedback if you want to see something more. Um, just feel free to add. Um, go to hawkwareapps.com and and you know download. Feel free to download applications if you haven't done so already. Um, give us your feedback and uh, thank you for uh, for joining us in uh, webinar Wednesday. I hope it was helpful. Um, as I said, uh, email me and uh, maybe I should write my email. That would be a Sensible thing to do. It's uh, wasi at hawkpages.com. Um, so email me uh, if you need to um, have the source code. I will put it in Dropbox and send you a link uh, for today's uh, application. Um, the recording for um, the presentation will be made available um, in our support site. So for our customers, it will be available in the support site. If there are no more questions, um, then uh, I'm going to conclude. Um, again, thanks for joining us, and uh, have a great rest of the week.